What is going on? Welcome back to Trucking Nebraska with Velox 18. I mean, Trucking California with Velox 18. I'm in Nebraska, so it feels like Trucking Nebraska with Velox 18. We are here at Bosselman's Travel Center in Grand Island, Nebraska, and we're getting ready to head out. We're going to make it up to Clear Lake, Iowa today. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is this is a shorter drive, so we're going to piece together today's driving and then the delivery all in one. So uh, stay tuned, have fun, roll the music. So I got um I got Swifty pulling in right next to me. And it's a it's a trainer, trainee. And he's backing in about two feet from my uh, truck. There's all those open spots on that side. So I went out and I let that trainer know. I said, hey, those five spots weren't good enough for you, six spots weren't good enough for you. Why'd you pick this spot right next to me? And he's like, I I picked that spot special. That's why, get back in your truck. And I said, no, don't use my effing truck as a training exercise. There's all these open spots on Saturday morning for him to park wherever he wants to. And he chose to back into a spot right next to me with a trainee in between me and one other truck where he's got to squeeze it in. And then there's a light pole up in front of him where he's got to, you know, it's not it's not that hard, but then again, it's a, it's a swift trainee and a swift trainer. How long has this swift trainer been, uh, been training you know oh now he now he goes and pulls out and picks a different spot after all that <clears throat> you wonder why like why even try why even try to put yourself in a position to back in between two trucks when there's so many open spots like you're training someone like is that why swift has so many accidents because they they actually purposely try to challenge their trainees <laughs> they're like, hey, this looks like the hardest spot to back into. And this whole huge place where there's pull-through spots just over there, there's a bunch, you know, it's like, I get it. If he needs to practice backing in and you want him to back, practice backing in between trucks, that's fine. Take him to the Swift Yard, man. Let him back in between trucks over there at the Swift Yard. But you don't pick the nicest truck in the truck stop to try an alley dock and, and back into a stop, uh, uh, you know, a thing. Like, that's, that's just dumb. That's just... Man, I usually try to stick up for Swift, but that, that trainer got under my skin. I, I cussed at him. I did. I did. It pissed me off because I'm just like, why the would you pick the one spot that he's got to actually have a you know challenge to get into? Stupid. So I I didn't uh, I didn't go uh, you know fist cuffs and and get that crazy. I just wanted to make sure he knew that he's an idiot and that. Uh, and I didn't like his decision. So that's what I did. Um, not proud of myself for the language I used. <laughs> but hey, man, I wake up, I'm getting dressed, warming up the truck, and uh, these guys come over and pick this one spot. Like, I, I'll show you guys right now what I'll spin this around and show you guys what we're looking at. Like, okay, so there's all these spots next to me they could have parked in. They're over there now, they've just moved. There's all these spots over there. Um, there's all those spots over there that are pull-through spots. <clears throat> and then there's me, and then there's this Hirschbach truck that's a bobtail. And they wanted to squeeze in this one spot for whatever reason. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I started my Saturday morning. Let's go. All right, so that's what happened. I actually pulled in to get fuel and I saw the trainer uh, walking back out to the truck. They had gone in to get some snacks or whatever and some lunch And so I went up. I actually apologized to him because I I don't know why I was I was just so bent out of shape this morning And uh, I mean I still I still hold to the fact that I don't want him using my truck as a road cone for swift training You know, but at the same time I understand he's trying to get this guy ready Because in a couple weeks this guy's gonna be out on his own having to back between your truck and, and someone else's truck uh, out there at a truck stop and he's gonna you know you're gonna wish that he had he had uh, backed in next to a couple of hood trucks uh, during his training to uh, get him you know get him used to backing in with uh, less room so I mean he had plenty of room he didn't actually have limited room on this one and his trainer was out out there watching him making sure he did everything right and he did a good job he got in most of the way he was 
hugging my side a little bit too much. But, um, you know, he's a little close to me, but at the same time, uh, he wasn't going to hit me. He never, he never even uh, got, got close to hitting me. He just, um, he just was having him park in a bunch of different spots to, uh, you know, put it in the hole, pull it out, and go, go uh, try another one. So he's doing a job as a trainer, and uh, I just shouldn't have been as aggressive. You know, I, basically, I just, I don't think I should have dropped the head bombs at him and, uh, and yelled at him. A little bit of the yelling is to, you know, talk over the, the engine noise, but at the same time, I was, uh, I came at him kind of hard, and I, it's just not, that's just not me, nor does it reflect, you know, my God very well when I lose my temper over something silly like that. So, uh, anyway, I apologized to him, made sure, uh, he, he knew that I understood what he was doing, and he, uh, he understood what I was talking about, he, he understood, uh, you know, that I'm, I'm sensitive about my truck, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, that was what happened. And so now we're uh, we're headed we're headed eastbound uh, to Des Moines, and then we're gonna hang a left and go uh, go north on I-35 from Des Moines up to Clear Lake, Iowa. So let's roll. <laughs> We're here in Clear Lake, Iowa. Uh, we got here, it's a little after 4, 4.30, something like that. Um, so we only drove like five and a half hours today. And um, you know, we're just kind of taking our time because uh, our, our delivery got pushed to Monday. We had hoped to deliver on Friday. Uh, once uh, we got into Utah, they said, okay, we made the delivery, or we made, yeah, we made your appointment for 10 a.m. on Monday. So that kind of threw a wrench into some things. Um, so then I just kind of started taking my time. If I would have known it was a Monday delivery, I probably would have gone uh, up to Northern California, hung out at the house for a day and a half, and then left out and just gone across 80 all the way out here. But uh, I didn't know that until I was already in Utah. And so, um, yeah, that's just kind of what, you know, the way it is. So we're just kind of easing our way, um, you know, through Nebraska, Iowa, uh, keeping little short days. Um, I was thinking about getting all the way actually here yesterday I was thinking about getting all the way to Clear Lake Iowa and then taking 34 off here and then driving in on on Sunday or Monday morning to um, to Minneapolis uh, or Shakopee Shakopee Minnesota but um anyway I decided you know what I haven't been using very many hours and if I break up my drive I don't need a 34 reset I really don't uh, I'm gonna be running you know I, it, you can't even call it recaps because I have like 20 no right as of now, I have, yeah, 25 hours, and I have two hours left to drive tomorrow. So I have like, uh, I'll have 23 hours uh, on Sunday, and then, um, you know, I started work on this seven day period on Monday night. So, you know, Monday night I'll start getting hours back. So it's really not even recap. It, 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 it's not even gonna come to that. Like, I'm never gonna be within 10 hours of my 70 even though I haven't taken a day off, you know, like te technically a day off. So these are like days off. I mean, driving for five hours, five and a half hours, six hours yesterday, five hours a day, whatever. I think it was six hours yesterday and five and a half today. So basically one day's worth of driving <laughs> in two days. You know, they've, it's just nice and leisurely. Uh, and I like it like that, it's kind of cool. So anyway, uh, I picked this little pilot here in Clear Lake because there's some restaurant options across the street, Arby's, Wendy's, which those are at truck stops, so I really don't want. But there's a Perkins, which I've never been to. The only reason I've ever heard of Perkins is because of the whole Tiger Woods debacle years ago. Um, uh, what else is over there? There was a little Mexican restaurant. There's some, it's like Tito's Tacos or something like that. So who knows, maybe I'll try some Iowa Mexican food. <laughs> we'll see, we shall see. But anyway, um, yeah, I'll check in with you guys in a little while. And uh, you know, we're gonna deliver this load Monday morning. It's only Saturday afternoon now, but we're gonna get, um, tomorrow get in to, to Shakopee stay at the hotel so i'll check in with you guys probably when we're on our drive over there and you know we'll we'll, we'll make this uh, make this video a little stretch it out over a few days because uh 
you know, we're still, it's, it's basically a day's worth of work. We're just splitting it into three days. So, uh, all right, that's, a, that's all we're going to do for right now. And I'll talk to you guys, um, at some point in the future. I don't even know when I'm going to catch up to you guys, but it'll be some point in the future. I promise. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I already hopped in the truck and started running north. Uh, we should break into Minnesota, um, like pretty soon here. And then, uh, we're just going to drive, it's about two hours, give or take, um, to get up to Shikoku, Minnesota from where I stayed last night in Clear Lake, Iowa. Uh, it's actually not a bad little spot. Um, I actually had picked it because across the street there was uh, a McDonald's, uh, a Culver's, which is like uh, uh, frozen custard and butter burgers, which I've never even heard of Culver's, so I was looking forward to maybe trying that. There's Perkins, a bunch of other stuff. Um, but then it's actually a highway that that is right there, so there's no um, there's no crosswalks or anything. So I would have had to play Frogger to go across. So I actually went down the street, um, probably just about the same distance as it would to go to there. Uh, there was a Bennigan's um, at a hotel. I forget what hotel it was at, but went to this Bennigan, sat at the bar, ended up having this sweet conversation with an older widow lady, and. Uh, yeah, spent my night keeping keeping company with another lonely person. So <laughs> uh, it was funny. She was the, the the bartender's grandma. She goes there and hangs out with her granddaughter at the bar. It was kind of funny. But uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, I had, a, I had a fun night. There was a bunch of truckers over the other end of the bar. And I'll be honest, there was a couple occasions where I wish I was over there in their conversation. But it was a sweet conversation to have anyway. So... Uh, I appreciated it. I, I didn't get her name, but uh, anyway, blessings to her. Hopefully she has a, a good day today. And uh, anyway, we'll get down here to Minnesota. I'll check in with you guys there. Minnesota and just uh, just pulled into this rest stop to uh, use the restroom and I thought I'd take a look around. Nice little walking path through the trees. I know some of you guys were concerned about the weather up here. I'll tell you right now, this weather is darn near perfect. And you guys see the trees, they're still green, they're just starting to turn yellow. So we got a few weeks yet of some, you know, before the weather turns all the way. Uh, we are the end of September, so it could turn at any time, but I'm thinking we got a little bit of time. I, I do, I think that, I really do, because this, uh, this weather's been perfect. It's 68 degrees right now, so totally comfortable weather. And uh, really, I've had good weather all the way across. I had really good weather, uh, even through Wyoming, I had no wind. Uh, I had a heavy load, so it didn't really matter. There was wind, but, um, you know, I, I did, I did uh, scoot right across there with pretty much perfect weather through Wyoming. Nebraska, Iowa, uh, pretty much uh, just bringing California weather with me and coastal California weather. There's no humidity, there's no uh, no uh, no heat, just nice, mild temperatures. So this is a cool little rest stop. <clears throat> Got some picnic areas and stuff. Someone told me uh, Colorado was requiring chains as of September. And I'm like, that's crazy talk. September is still summer in most places, man. So uh, anyway, we'll turn back around, get back over here in the truck, 
get up the road. Let's go. I know you guys probably can't see it because uh, this camera doesn't get things uh, from a distance very well, but the Minneapolis skyline is right on the, uh, the horizon there. Pretty cool. We're pretty far away, probably, what, 10, 15 miles out, but we can see it pretty good. Cool. I'm digging it. But we're uh, we're gonna hop off I-35 right now. We're gonna spin around here and start heading west on this uh, Highway 13 to head to Shakopee. All right, we got here a little earlier, parked right here on the street, um, staying at the Baymont Inn and Suites in Shakopee, Minnesota. And it's 82 degrees outside right now, guys. 82 stinking degrees, so it's beautiful. And uh, yeah, we're gonna wake up in the morning, make the delivery, staying at a hotel so that I could get close to the delivery this morning and um, so I can go live tonight with good internet. Because uh, most everywhere I go still only has 4G. I'm sure if I got into Minneapolis all the way, I could get some 5G, but as it is now, everywhere I've gone, it's only 4G. and spotty uh spotty network so i went ahead and just got the booked room and that way i can save my clock tomorrow too i can i can deliver like two miles from here and be ready to go pick up another load which originally i thought i was going to be in a hurry to pick up that other load and get going back west but that load canceled so we'll figure it out tomorrow morning but for now i'll uh take advantage of the internet and uh I don't know. Gonna go over here and try this restaurant, the Muddy Cow. The Muddy Cow. So, we'll see how this goes. I think it's gonna be good. Watch some football, do a great freight race live, and uh, maybe even do some laundry, depending on if I can find some quarters. So, I'll check in with you guys tomorrow morning. All right, and. Uh... <clears throat> We're about to go live on uh, the Great Freight Race Week 4 Recap. So that's what we're doing here. I got my little setup here. And, uh, well, if you guys missed this, this live show that we're doing, then go watch that after you watch this video. Go, this one will be, um, what did I title it? I titled it, like, Real, Real Owner Operator Incomes. Uh, Great Freight Race Week 4 Recap. Something like that. So go check that out after you get done watching this video because you can't stop this video to go watch that one that like hurts the analytics and stuff all right let's see who is in here mark is in here first there we go so go check it out all right so uh i didn't get any footage on the way over here which is probably better uh, it was only a five minute drive but um I went by this uh, horse horse race track, and uh, there was a bunch of roundabouts, and probably wasn't a truck route, uh, but it was the easiest way for me to get out of the hotel I was at, so I just chose to go that way. There was another way that took more uh, like main streets rather than <laughs> the like somewhat residential. But it's weird because on one side there was houses, and then on the other side there was warehouses, so. I don't know, but anyway, I, I came over here to the receiving side, and the guy said, "Oh, um, that's uh, that's actually not for our side." He said, "That's for that's for the shipping side, actually." And I said, "Oh, okay." He goes, "Yeah, because that's that's just a transfer from our from Moreno Valley, so you got to go to the other side of the building." So now we're on our way over here to this other side of the building, which makes sense. This stuff probably came out of a container from China or wherever it got built got got trucked to Moreno Valley where they could you know uh, put it into uh, manageable manageable um, packaging situations and then um, we uh, they want to bring it over here to be shipped to this area so a lot of trucks moving this one product around off the ship 
well, probably onto the ship, you know, off the ship, into my truck, over to here, and then from here, it'll probably go into trucks and to, to actual stores or distribution centers, and then from distribution centers into actual stores, so I don't know, we'll see. But uh, I don't know the whole logistics chain. I just know I gotta deliver this right now, right here, and uh, I'm about 40 minutes early, so I'm not in a hurry. All right, and uh, we're already in the dock. Uh, it's just a little bit past my appointment time right now, like 10, 10 or something like that, and they're probably halfway done unloading me, so I gotta hurry up with this because I gotta go find my next load and find out where the heck I wanna go. I'm trying to get home. I gotta figure out which direction I'm gonna go pick to pick up my next load. So uh, there's some loads out there, but I gotta, I gotta spend some time getting them to come up to my price come on but uh anyway i uh wanted to tell you guys about this load though uh, it was a load just from warehouse to warehouse for this legrand audio visual and uh, it was a load full of um wall mounts for tvs and that's all it was wall mounts uh the whole thing thirty-eight thousand pounds so not crazy heavy but uh not light either so we we had a little bit of weight in the box and um yeah we i got it out here for 6200 bucks so six thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, it came out to like, like three fourteen a mile. So once again, not like the crazy you know rates that are going on, but I should be able to get uh, like two fifty a mile going back. So not a bad average when you think about it. Um, and not not it could have been a three day load if I would have got here by Friday. But it not getting here by Friday kind of makes this load a little bit of a loser. But hey, I've had a nice chill drive um you know i miss my family but um you know it's been an easy an easy drive uh, because i've been able to break it up into small little bite-sized pieces so uh the way back we're not going to do that we're going to hammer down uh i got to find a load and i got to hammer down so that's it that's it for this video that's it for this load it's been like four videos long um we got this thing out from moreno valley all the way out here to uh Shikopi, uh minnesota just south uh, west of Minneapolis and uh, over 2,000 miles or just about 2,000 miles or 1,900 something I forget anyway a lot of miles a lot of time we left last Wednesday and we're here delivering on Monday so I guess technically six days we're, we're into the sixth day now for this load so long time but uh, hey 6200 bucks in my pocket and uh, I'm gonna put this on week five of the great freight race because uh, that's when all the miles and all the fuel got put in so i'm i'm it's a monday morning delivery it's close enough to sunday and then that means that whatever load i get today is going to start my last week of the great freight race so i got to get hustling i got to find out find so, a way to try to maximize my profits and get home and uh we'll see we'll see what i can find so you have to stay tuned to the next video see that love you guys peace out see you on the next load